Hey everyone, uh, Jeremy here. It's Tuesday night and we're gonna create some art. It's going to be awesome. Um, hopefully you guys are doing very well and hopefully the second week of the year is kicking off to a great start. Uh, for me, just keeping busy and having fun. Um, I see that uh, kids are already in the chat, hopefully some other people streaming. Uh, usually my Tuesday night streams don't really attract as many people as the uh, Friday streams, which is great because I'm gonna do another experimental picture tonight. And uh, the less eyes on it while I'm working on it, the better. That, that's my outlook on it. Um, I'd rather like not a lot of people be watching uh, when I have a potential to just go off the rails and make a complete mess. Um, so that said, we're, we're going to uh, work on another coffee art, um, coffee painting uh, art piece tonight. Uh, I really enjoyed the horse one I did last week. I got a lot of good feedback on that. And uh, I'm super nervous because I want to kind of recreate the magic because I think it turned out so well. Uh, but I, I really have no idea what I'm doing, so we're going to have to see how it goes. Uh, I see Marble's in here. Okay, Larry's in here. Uh, so if it's okay with you guys, I'm just going to hop in and get started. Um, so we are doing a um, like a kind of a, a stag deer, uh, basically a deer with giant antlers. And I don't really know all the different um, uh, versions of deer that's out there. To me, it kind of looks like a, a, a cow with a long nose and some uh, uh some horns but uh yeah they, i mean I, I assume it's a stag deer whatever that is it, it's like the type of deer you might see up on some rednecks wall <laughs> and uh that, that's good enough for me uh but i i think it's gonna look cool when it's all said and done um we'll just see how it goes so uh to just kind of recap what's involved in this uh i do use like instant coffee um to do these paintings and uh, the idea is that you kind of try to control the water involved and stuff. And um, you just make a, a cool mess. And hopefully something comes out of it. Um, here, I am going to let gravity do the work. So like the last time, I'm going to make like a big mess down here uh, where the, I wanted to say horse, uh, where the deer's neck is going to be. Um, just so that I can kind of create this like cool drizzle with like gravity. So yeah, Leroy has a... Uh, uh, one of these deer heads on the, his wall, but I'd rather paint a deer than actually go out and hunt deer. You know, like this is this is better for the deer itself. <laughs> I always thought if I ever was a hunter, it would be with like a camera. I I feel kind of guilty for um, the animal itself. So I'm using gravity here to kind of pull this and see if I can get some yeah some cool effects. Now I do end up with like wearing a lot of uh, the coffee at this point, but that's okay. It, you know, it's all for the sake of art. But um, I want more than that, so I'm going to get a little bit more crazy with it. And then, like last time, I'm going to try to cheat and see if I can create some channels for it to flow. I think that kind of works. So, like, if you ever make one of these um, these uh, copy art paintings, it is like watercolor, but and, and that you're kind of controlling the water just to uh, uh, kind of give it an idea of where to flow. And then the rest of it's up to gravity. So let's see if I can get this a little bit better in the camera shot. There you go. Basically, that just drips down, ends up in my lap. But it looks cool. So that's all that matters. We do it all for art. All right. So I'm going to let that sit. I don't know if I'm happy with it yet. Um, but, oh, you've got one in your, oh, you got a Kentucky buck. Oh, cool. Cool, cool. Um, and it's not that I have anything against it. It's just that I, I personally couldn't see myself going out there and having one on my wall. I'd rather have a piece of art. <laughs> but that said, every, everyone around me has one. Like, even the local pub has, like, a big uh, big deer head up, up on uh, the wall. All right, so while that's kind of sitting, I'm going to just let that do its thing. Let it marinate, sit on the back burner. I'm going to get some, um, again, it's it's all powdered coffee, and you apply water to it. And then it's kind of like watercolor. So you just kind of mix some water in. I, I don't usually start with pre-made, um, pre-mixed, although I did here. So like I, I do also do the pre-mixed, but I have like more control over just mixing it as I go. So that, that's what I usually end up doing. So let me move that out of the way. So while that's working as business down there, I'm gonna start up here. So I did kind of like pencil in a, uh, kind of an idea of where I wanted things to go. So I'm just gonna kind of like basically outline that at the moment. Um, if you guys remember from the horse uh, painting I did, the idea at this stage is just to kind of give yourself an idea of where everything is. You're not really trying to darken anything, that comes later. 
In fact, um, you really can't. Uh, one of the differences between watercolor and coffee art is there's not a lot of pigment in it. So try as you might, you can't really get dark values initially to begin with anyway. You have to kind of like layer it to get dark values. And it's kind of the same case with watercolor, but you can get more darker values in watercolor than you can with coffee. So at this point, it's just basically outlining things so that I know where everything is. I've got some pencil kind of hints in here of where I want things to be. So I'm also trying to reinforce that as I go along. But also we're here to chat, so make sure make sure I don't just drone on about the art. Like I want I want that to be a focus this year in 2024 that like you know, we spend some more time talking amongst the, ourselves like what are your likes, dislikes, what movies are you watching, what books you're reading, things like that. I am interested in in you guys. So like you guys let me know if there's any kind of topic you guys want to talk about while I just do this art. I know some people do kind of like check in at least just to see what the process is and I'll probably interrupt whatever we're talking about to kind of explain what I'm doing anyway. But also I kind of want it to be be more conversational. Cuz like I always talk about how the type of art I want to do is like out in public where I'm actually in a public setting chatting with people while I uh while I do art. So it's all good practice for me. Uh, thanks, uh, because I can. Um, yeah, like a lot of, um, a lot of people like really, really like that. And, you know, I, I didn't know how it was going to turn out, but since so many people like it, you know, <laughs> I'm a sucker for whatever I will make, whatever you guys like, like, I, I, I don't care. I, I I'm in it for the, uh, the practice. So if you guys like coffee paintings, I'll do coffee paintings. I, I mean, I enjoy doing them. They're fun. Um, I love how they turn out. So uh, if you guys want to see more copy paintings, I'll do them. Plus, I just like the larger format. I don't know. Like, you guys probably wouldn't notice, but I, I kind of zoomed out the camera a little bit. It, it's a little bit further out. Like, you can even you can even see the mark here on the desk from, like, where I rigged up this, like, overhead contraption. Um, that's also that I can use bigger paper. This is actually uh, 12 by 18, I think. So like everything's bigger in this. This is uh, this is like proper wall art, I think. So you got some features here in the ear. Okay, just none of this really matters. It's all just like an underpainting, essentially. I'm just kind of trying to give myself a few little hints to the structure of it so that when I come back and actually pay attention to details, um, there's like, I don't have to rely on like an under sketch or anything like that. Hey, Richard, how's it going? For those of you who don't know, my very first stream way back in 2023, <laughs> I've been around so long, um, it was in January of 2023. and. I don't even, I, I didn't promote it. I don't, I don't know how people found it. Maybe Richard remembers. Um, but like, there was like two people in my chat. Uh, it was Richard and I think Vertigo and maybe one or two other people. I don't remember. It's been a while, but um, yeah, it, it wasn't much of a big deal at the time, but Richard loved the work that I did. And uh, it was super inspiring because I was trying to like, you know, get motivated to do art and he said the coolest thing like uh he wanted the picture i was doing uh sent to him and i'm like why why do you want this piece of crap you know because it wasn't all that good in my opinion like uh but he wanted it and i'm like why do you want it so bad and he's like well you know i, I think you uh i don't want to misquote you richard but uh i want to to remember it as you thought it was awesome and you said something to the effect of like, who knows, maybe you'll blow up someday. And, uh, you know, it will be nice to have like your first piece of art on YouTube. And I'm like, man, that's awesome. Like that was super inspiring. Made me, uh, made me want to keep doing this. So thank you, Richard. I just wanted to give a shout out to Richard because he, he doesn't make it in here as often as maybe I, uh, he'd like. And uh, whenever he does show up, I want to remind him that he was one of my first viewers, which is cool. Oh, cool. It's hung up by the fire. Well, don't let it fall into the fire. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, that was um, that was almost a year ago. Uh, a little over a year ago. It's hard to believe like New Year's was just last week. 
I was thinking about that today. Like, it feels like it's been a month since New Year's. Just this last week was just crazy for me. We had uh, flowering and some trees down. I know Jeremy has secrets. Ha! Huh? We all have secrets. Secret, uh, yeah, the, one secret is that painting. Like, um, if I ever uh, get in the uh, partner program where I'm not, like, relying on, uh, you know, cumulative hours of viewing and all that stuff, I'm going to go back and I'm going to delete some of my older videos because they're terrible. And that's probably the first one to go. Oh, Mama Q was in there. Okay, cool. I can't remember everybody was in there. It, it was like a year ago, but um, yeah, it, it is an anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, it is an anniversary. But it's been a good year. Like, um, I think I've gotten a lot better at doing this. Uh, a larger community. There's more people in here now to talk to. Oh, that's awesome. I have high hopes for 2024. It's still early in the year. I haven't gotten pessimistic yet. Like probably by the, uh, probably by June, I'll be like, man, this year isn't going the way I wanted it to. But right now, right now, I feel super optimistic. But we'll we'll see how it goes. You know, I do I do have high hopes. There's a there's a lot going on this year. Both like in this community and some of the other communities I'm in, a lot of potential there. Um, World at large, you got like an election going on this year. You got, um, I don't know, Taylor Swift might do something. I, I don't know what happens in the world. What are some of the things that might happen in 2024? Yeah, there you go. That, that's a good conversation piece. What are your predictions for 2024? And like, you can get as creative with that as you want. Like, what do you think is going to happen in 2024 just in general? Like in the world, maybe in your own life? What are your predictions? It's hard, it's hard to make predictions. I'm not sure I ever had any predictions that turned out exactly right. They always are off by something. Like some, some small little detail. Like I like to think that I've got things figured out. I go through the world with confidence. I, I feel like, I feel like I, I know enough to get by and everything, but I'm always surprised. There's always something surprising that just pops out of nowhere. Yeah, so far we can say this is the best year ever. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Started uh, fourth or fifth stream? Oh, okay, cool. Um, I'm trying to remember what I was doing. Yeah, so I, I think um, I think at some point I started switching to like colored pencils and doing some drawings, which I think turned out okay. Uh, I'm trying to remember like. Um, I still like that Wednesday Adams I did with colored pencils. That turned out really cool. For a while there, I was doing uh, I was doing Marvel characters as cats. I thought that was cool. Um, oh, The Simpsons is like the standard for making predictions. There is nothing The Simpsons hasn't predicted. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, I've I've always been a fan of The Simpsons, and uh, yeah, they are they are uncanny in, in what they're able to predict. Like, I, I swear, like, the writer's room is full of, like, a team of psychics or something. But, yeah, like, um, I still like that idea, by the way. Um, the um, Marvel characters is, uh, is cats. That was fun. Or not, not cats, but animals in general. I think the idea is that I wanted to work on, like, animals. And I, I didn't think people would, like, watch just me drawing animals. I thought I had to put, like, some little gimmick to it. So, like... I thought, um, yeah, I'll, I'll make some Marvel characters as, as like animals, and I think I think some of those turned out all right. Um, I think at the time, I'm still not totally comfortable with colored pencils. Uh, colored pencils are kind of tough because I feel like there's like a lot of work involved in those. So like, in order to make something that looks super uh, decent, you have to spend several several hours on it just to get the pressure in there and just get the multiple layers and everything. Um, I like colored pencils. I like the look you get with them, but I don't, I don't have the patience to spend 10 hours doing a picture. But that's my only beef with colored pencils. I still use them. Obviously I, I used them just last week to do uh, Rome dog. Um, but 
they're not uh i'm always looking for like ways to speed up the process so like you know i've uh like last week i i, uh, I did the technique where i was applying like a watercolor underpainting um and that works uh but you know like i don't i don't like just doing colored pencils i just feel like you're burning through your colored pencils and, and they're not cheap like um the set i've got i think i, I got for like 70 bucks back in the day um it's a, it's a pretty nice set a lot of colors and stuff like that but like i, I don't want i don't want to use them all up on one picture some people out there who do like hyper realism they could probably go through an entire set just off of one picture uh so just to recap I, i'm just putting down like uh some some uh coffee here just to kind of get an idea of where the uh stacks face like you can't really see it on the uh, page yet because like this just looks like a big blob down here and i'm trying to connect them um but uh, you know we'll get there so down down here i'm gonna try to try to get some darker value in here off the rip but down here i kind of want it to be a little bit darker so let me try to do that the problem is that this this first layer it i just know from experience it's, it's going to dry super light regardless of like how much coffee i put into it that's just the nature of it but down here i hope in the end it's going to be kind of super dark and uh same with like through here follow my guidelines i think the edge of the neck is going to be here hey uh, ida thank you yeah i mean it, I appreciate you saying that looks good yet, yeah, like so far, but this is just the, like the ugly phase. It's, it's going to be a while before it looks good, but I appreciate that. Keep trucking along here. I heard somebody else call it a bucket. So are these, I always thought they were like stag deer or something, but I don't really know what that means. So like, is this, do people call these bucks? Is that the deal? Like, I know, I know the different genders for, like, uh, horses. You've got um, colts, fillies, um, stallions, and, and mares and stuff. I don't really know when it comes to uh, deer. I don't I do not do enough pictures of deer like I would like to, so I, don't, I, I never really looked into, like, the terminology there. But I think this is going to look cool. Like, I, I could see somebody hanging this up, like, on their wall. I, that's my hope, at least. Yeah, the top is like, I, I like the horns. The horns are really cool. Like, I know what I'm supposed to be painting, but when I see those horns, I kind of want to put them on somebody's head and do like a really cool character. Um, but no, I, I have to stay focused here. I have to create this uh, this this deer. Or buck. We're going to call it a buck. Get some, get, try to get some darker value in here. Yeah, thanks, Ina. Yeah, see, like other live streamers, they keep they remind me that I'm supposed to ask for people to uh, like it. I always forget. Um, yeah, make sure you uh, give it a like. Uh, future viewers, like I think most of the people in the room um, are returning viewers. Uh, future viewers, you know, if you like this art, uh, well, even if you don't like the art, <laughs> it's like, just uh, you know, subscribe so that you can watch more of me. You know. Uh, if you like to be annoyed on Tuesdays and Friday nights, uh, give me a, a subscribe there and a like. And, uh, you know, here we go. All right. Liking something and subscribing to it causes it to, like, go up higher in the algorithm is what I hear. So even if you don't like me and you just want to annoy other people, give it a like and subscribe. There we go. Yeah, if you want to annoy other people, like you want more people to be annoyed by me, give it a like and subscribe. So uh, one of the challenges with um, this uh, buck is, um, again, I, I don't really know the anatomy. I, I don't do enough of them so that, you know, like I'm just intuitively following the muscle structure and stuff like I do maybe with horses because I'm more familiar with them. But that's cool because it gives me an opportunity to learn and kind of expand. Um, I did a buck. I, I I have done a buck and I'm trying to remember what I did it in. I think I did one in char uh, charcoal. I did a baby deer once for sure. I'm trying to remember if I did like um, an adult deer at one point. I don't know. Don't know. I can't remember. 
Um, definitely did a baby deer because that, that one's so cute. I have it on my wall back there. Um, I don't remember if I did a large deer or not. I probably have at some point just because I like doing wildlife. So, and then, you know, this is a common uh, wildlife. Like I, I've done like a bear just because that's, you know, I, I want to be a wildlife artist, basically. I want to be all the artists. <laughs> I want to be a cartoonist. I want to be a wildlife uh, artist. I want to be, you know, I want to be all the things. Oh, I did. I, oh, thank you, Mama Q. Man, Mama Q's on it tonight with the memory. Good job. Uh, yeah, um, so I did the um, the Hogwarts castle, and uh, I, I I didn't really like the foreground of it, so I gave it some more thought, like, the next day. Like, this, oh, disclaimer, this probably isn't going to be finished in one night. Uh, I like to throw that out as a disclaimer in case somebody wants to bail at, <laughs> right now and come back to it tomorrow or something. But um, yeah, so the deal with the uh, Harry Potter castle is uh, I didn't finish it all in one uh, night. And then the next day I was kind of looking at it and I'm like, well, what can I improve here? And um, I, I thought the foreground really needed some sort of focal point. So yeah, I did put in the uh, the deer there. It was, yeah. Well, I didn't know that was your favorite, Mama Q. I still have it somewhere if you want it. I, I can send it to you. Um, like for all my longtime subscribers, I want you guys to make requests and stuff because like I want to I want to kind of pay you back for your uh, your attention because <laughs> I appreciate that kind of stuff. So like if there's a picture that I did that you liked and I haven't already given it away, some of these I, I have, um, let me know. And um, I'm talking mostly like for like past stuff um, because it's probably just sitting in a drawer somewhere or something. I may not have uh, done anything with it. Now, some of these I, I do specifically for friends or commissions or, or something like that. So I can't give those away. Um, like um, th this one here, if it turns out really nice, I might put it up on like Etsy or something like that. So, um, but definitely if there's one that I'm just practicing or something like that, let me know. I, I'll send it to you if, uh, if I still have it. Uh, but yes, the Harry Potter one, I still have. And, um, you know, I, I, I think it turned out all right. I, I think it's pretty cool. It's one of my, uh, my early attempts at uh, painting something cool. But yeah, uh, you know, you guys, it, uh, maybe I'll do it so, like some contests for like new people or something too. Like, and certainly if, if you like happen to uh, come in here like every week, like I know who you are and you're not just like some random person who popped in, I, you know, I, you guys deserve something for your attention, you know, I'm trying to think what was my idea here? I think this would come across here. Yeah, I think I'll just kind of, let me just kind of get some tone in here and kind of go from there. But yeah, Mama Q, that, that one's obviously yours. That's cool. Uh, I'll send it out at some point. Because I can't, but like the, um, I still have the Halloween trilogy somewhere. I think I'm going to um, take some, uh, some pictures of that so that when Halloween comes around next year, maybe I can uh, do something with it. Um, I'm not sure if those are spoken for. Let me check on that because I can. And because uh, there was somebody who was interested in those and I, I'm not sure like where that was going, but let me check on that for you uh, because I can, because like, I do want those to eventually find a home. If, if they haven't, certainly if they haven't found a home by Halloween, it, they're yours. And also, like, if anybody wants any of these pictures, like, as a just like a download or something, like, if you don't care about the physical copy or something, you just want like a download so that you can take it to like, um, you know, Staples or Staples still around? One of those places where you can get like a print made or something like that. I'm happy to digitize it and everything for you. Uh, for those of you Four Sins fans, um, I do have like a high resolution version of that portrait I did of Four Sin. Um, I made that available for like download for people. Like, have at it, you know. Stag is on my to do list. Ah, yeah, I mean it's a lot of fun. This uh, this stag, uh, like. I don't know. It's still too early to know how it's going to turn out. 
but I'm liking the features in this face. So if it turns out anywhere like what I have in my mind, I, I think it's gonna look awesome. So I'm not an expert on brushes, but just a quick uh, comment on like the brushes I use. So like, again, I don't know what <laughs> what the differences between all the different brushes are and like which ones work better. I've just noticed that like, uh, I've got a really big brush that I use for like things like this and stuff, uh, which I think works pretty good. I don't like how this is pulling. So let me mop that up a little bit. Kind of pull that up here. Kind of redirect that just a little bit. I noticed that it was kind of pulling. The, that's what happens sometimes when the paper starts warping. Um, anyway, uh, so I have like a big brush and then I have several smaller brushes uh, that I kind of work. I work from like the largest brush down to smaller brushes, which I think works out pretty well. Um, for these pictures, I use a rounded brush, probably for um, some of the other painting pride, <laughs> like experiments that I do. I, I like to use like more of a flat brush. But for these, I, I think um, I think a round brush works out because it makes these nice little smooth areas and stuff. So just a quick tip on that. Like I, I'm not an expert on like choosing brushes. Plus, you know, my medium here is coffee. Like it's not like there's any kind of crazy uh, artist, uh, artisanal um, skill being applied to it, you know, like where you actually know what you're doing. <laughs> kind of like an outline going of this eye. So this eye has got to be super dark. This was, um, this was a problem with the um, horse as well, where I had to get it started and then come back over it several times before I got anywhere near the darkness I wanted in the eye. But I'm going to go ahead and blob in kind of um, the basic shape of the eye. And then once it kind of dries a little bit, I'll come back over it. I don't know if you guys noticed or not, but the um, globs of coffee come off like highly reflective, like super uh, glossy. I noticed when I uh, when I did my uh, horse picture, and I kind of think that's cool. I don't know if it'd be different if I wasn't using um, um, instant coffee. Like maybe maybe it wouldn't be so uh, glossy or clumpy or whatever. Hey, thanks, uh, Ida. Um. Oh, great question, Willie. So uh, in the original series, which was made for that treasure hunt, um, there were like nine uh, by design, you know. Uh, it, well, I didn't start off thinking there'd be nine. I thought I'd do one like once a week or whatever, but then I got busy and uh, I only ended up making nine. In fact, I, I made eight. And then like at the end, I'm like, well, I'll make one more just to round it off because that, that makes sense. So that one was made after that treasure hunt ended, but there were nine total. And then Last year, the year before, I thought, well, you know, like I'm just sitting around with this character and uh, people, people were asking to hear from him again. So I decided to kind of like uh, resurrect him. And uh, I think I made like two or three after that. I haven't made a lot. <laughs> the stack is named uh, Leroy Jenkins. Leroy Jenkins. I can't do that right. I had a friend who had that set as his, uh, his ringtone. So like every time his phone would call it, it would be Leroy Jenkins. Uh, yeah, I, uh, if you have a request, yeah. Um, I wish I could do like you, to be honest. I wish I could just take a request during a live stream and just be prepared to just kind of crank it out. Uh, but no, I, I try to put some thought into something before I do it. And uh, yeah, if you, if you have a request, uh, shoot me an email. Um, you can drop a comment. Uh, on the YouTube, if you don't want to send me an email, I, I respect that. Um, so, uh, yeah, like there's a bunch of different ways to reach me. Um, you can like, um, I've, there's like a link on my channel's homepage that has like my Instagram, Twitter or X or whatever you call it now. Um, I think my email's in that, but it's in my description anyway. Like, yeah, there's a, for anybody watching this, there's a bunch of ways to reach out to me. Or just drop a comment. I read all the comments, so it's it's probably not going to escape my notice. I, it may be a while before I get to it. Same with the email, actually. I should throw that out as a disclaimer. I suck at 
replying to emails. So, but I'll I'll eventually get around to it. Um, but yeah, like uh, feel free to shoot me a request. You know the usual disclaimers. I <laughs> like it may be a while before I get to the uh, requests. Uh, I may turn down requests, like if I did, just not interested. Like uh, some people have sent me some really strange requests. It's just not the kind of art I create. Uh, so, or this, it's not that I, I don't think I could create it. It's just I'm not. It, some of the requests are just dumb. So I'm just not. I'm probably just not going to do those. But I, I'll let you know what, one way or the other. I'll, I'll be like, uh, you probably need somebody else for that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, hopefully it'll look uh, super amazing when it's done, but we'll, we'll have to see. I do think that this one's going to take a little longer than the horse, just because there's more going on. It's a slightly bigger, too. So, like, again, this is a 12 by 18 paper, so, like, a foot across and then 18 inches down. Um, oh, I got to move this a little bit. I, I, try, to, I try to keep my, um, my little headshot out of the picture so that when I make a, a short, it's easier. That'll still work. Anywho, um, yeah. So there, there's like a it's slightly bigger than the uh, horse one. I'll tell you what my my um, where were the strange requests? Uh, great question. So I'm I'm trying to. Uh, um, I don't want to name any names. Some of these are people that you guys know, so I don't I don't want to like throw out anything that would be recognizable because I would I wouldn't say it's a strange request. I would just be like oh, I'm I'm just not interested in doing that. But I'll give you one from like uh, Reddit. So um, there's a Reddit draw me uh, sub that sometimes I uh, especially early on when I was just looking for random things to uh, draw. There was um there's a uh, draw me subreddit where people just post a picture and they don't really care what you come up with. They just, you know, like, it's a cool place to find something to practice. So, like, people put pictures up and everything, and, and um, you know, sometimes it's people, sometimes it's animals. But basically, they, they're just happy if somebody draws, like, a stick figure or something like that. They're not, they're not going to put any pressure on you. Um, so, anyway, it's a great place to uh, find things to, uh, to draw. So, anyway, I drew something. I posted it up there. Somebody thought it was nice. So, they... Uh, they they were like, hey, do you do uh, commissions? And I'm like, well, I'm not opposed to doing commissions. So like, if if you have something you want me to try, I'm I'm happy to give it a shot. So the person writes back and um, they send me a picture of somebody in a prison outfit, and and they're like, um, can you draw me in this prison outfit? And I'm like, I guess I could, but why? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, why do you want me to draw you in this like prison jumpsuit? It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, so maybe that's not that strange, but to me it was like I don't know. It's like I want to I want to create really interesting art, like a picture of some rando in a prison outfit. Didn't really stand out to me as like something that I thought would be that interesting. Um, I'm trying to think of other bizarre requests. So every you know sometimes people um, th this one's a tough one. So like uh. This is this is a, I wouldn't call this a strange request, uh, but it, it, it's a actually a common request. So somebody might ask you to do a picture that really isn't in your like I don't want to say style because like my style is all over the place. It's not like I do the same type of art each time, but they might ask you to do um, something that's just like so far away from like what you're trying to accomplish. So like. Every time I do something, you know, especially like free pictures that I do, like if you're, if somebody gave me like a stack of cash, I, I mean, I'll, I'll pay whatever. I don't care. I'll pay you in a prison outfit if you give me a stack of cash. That's fine. Um, but if you're just making like a free request, I, I try to couple it with something I'm actually trying to learn. Um, so it like, you know, if somebody says, well, I want to stag and uh, coffee or something like that, then I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. All right, bet. I, I want to do that because one, I'm trying to practice my coffee art. I'm trying to practice my watercolor painting in general. And also I like doing wildlife. So that's something that seems compatible with what I'm already doing. But if somebody asks me to draw like a cartoon character of like an alien, um, this is just random. Nobody actually requested it. It's like an alien, um, you know, sunbathing on a beach or something, or something random like that. 
I'm like, well, okay, I could probably do that, but like that's not going to really progress my skill set because I don't do that kind of art. Uh, it sounds cute. It sounds like fun and everything. It's just not something I normally do. So um, if I did agree to do that, it would be one of those, well, I'll get around to it type things, you know, if that makes sense. So I'm not like a snob or anything. It's just I want to create, I don't know what I want to do. I just don't want to do, <laughs> I don't want to do an alien on like a beach or something like that. Yeah. All right. Thanks, kid. Yeah. Well, at least that's in coffee. So that would progress my skill set. <laughs> it wasn't even like an orange jumpsuit it was some like drab um it, it reminded me of um i don't know like one of those dystopian future kind of prison outfits like uh something you might see in like a i don't know like a a movie adaptation of like 1984 or something like that now vitruvian man in coffee that would be cool now that's it that's something that i might take on i like that idea but it'd have to be some spin on the Vitruvian Man, if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, just because, like, that already looks aged. It, it does work with coffee and everything like that. So I would want to change that. Now, how about Vitruvian Man meets Alien in coffee? There we go. So, like, it would be, you know, the Vitruvian Man, but it would be an alien instead. Um, you know, with all the other, like, uh, details that make up the Vitruvian uh, Man. Uh, for those who don't don't know, that's the uh, that's the famous uh, picture of um, uh, human anatomy by uh, Leonardo da Vinci. That would look kind of cool in coffee, but with a twist. So, like, if it had like an alien or something like that, I'll tell you what handcuffs are like. Unless they were... <laughs> okay, Larry. <laughs> I feel like that's why, maybe why you have your name like that. Okay, Larry. Yeah. So, um, I don't know, like maybe it's a, I don't like to judge. So like, I feel like it's kind of judging to call them like strange requests or something. They're just not, they're, they're, they're just not anything that's like of a mutual interest. It's, it's not like, um, I feel like I'm, I'm progressing or anything like that by doing that work. But yeah, there are, um, there are uh, some folks that you guys would know, so I, I don't want to like elaborate too much. Uh, but hey, that said, I don't want to turn anything down. So like, if you've got an idea or something, feel free to send it to me. It's just, you know, if I don't get to it, then I'll leave you to be the judge of whether or not I think your idea is weird. <laughs> I won't tell you it's weird. I just may kind of, you may be able to kind of like infer that from me not doing the picture. <laughs> But, uh, you know, by the same token, some people do come up like re with really cool ideas and stuff like that. Um, and, uh, you know, I am always on the lookout for like pet portraits, people portraits, wildlife, um, anything that I can paint and feel like a real artist. That That's, that's my goal. I, I want to be a real artist. I don't want to be a fake artist. I want to want to create stuff that may not ever end up in a gallery, but could possibly look all right in the gallery. That That's the idea. Thanks, Ida. I appreciate that. Um, all right. So like uh, one of the tips for doing uh, coffee paintings or watercolors in general is, or any painting really, is like whenever you have like wet areas, kind of work on um, the dry areas. So uh, while we were working on this stuff down here, some of that stuff up top has had a chance to dry, which means that it's fair game to go over it with a second coat. And unfortunately, I'm sorry to say, most of coffee painting is just going over the same thing you've already gone over several times, creating multiple layers, um, which also, you know, like, I say it because it's work, but it's also kind of the point you want to create multiple layers because that's what gives you some of the cool effects of a uh, coffee painting so it makes it look awesome i can say that without stuttering or choking on my own tongue <laughs> sometimes they get a little tongue twisted do you think at one point you could draw my cat and dog playing maybe yeah um yeah, like if you already have a picture of your dog and cat playing, absolutely. 
uh, if you need me to kind of like take your dog and cat and they're not already playing and you want to kind of like mix them together and stuff, I could probably even do something like that. Um, that's where I have to actually think though. I, I have to actually think about like, uh, how do I position this uh, cat so that I get the features of the cat so that it's recognizable um, and, and so on. But yeah, I, I could sort all that out. I, I, that's the kind of, look, if you guys want me to do um a request for you find some way to spin it so that it's a challenge because that's the stuff i can't turn down you know it's it's just in, in my dna it's like whenever i'm challenged with something that's what i want to do and i'll waste time on something just to see if i can do it that's kind of the whole point of this uh channel to be honest is like i wanted to see if i practiced like all the time at least once a week but you know starting out at least daily um, I wanted to see if doing that improved my art, and I'm happy to report it has. So, um, but yeah, that was the challenge. So, like, really, it, it's easy. It, it's so I, I don't want to tell you guys. Look, I don't want to tell you guys this because it's super secret, and um, I'm going to share this with just you guys. I don't want you guys to tell the world. Uh, like, don't share this video with anybody because then they'll know the secret as well. But the secret to getting me to do anything is make it seem like a challenge because that works every time. Make it seem like I can't do it. Like, be like, Jeremy, you can't do that. And then I'll be like, oh, I'll, I'll prove that I can do it. You know, that, that's just my how my lizard brain works. I'm sure I'm not alone in that. <laughs> like a lot of people are probably like that. But yeah, I like challenges. Um, yeah, uh, okay, if you, if you don't come back, Ida, have a good one. But, um, you know, there are some challenges that I have accepted that I wasn't able to do, um, and that's just the nature of it, but you never know until you try. Push that limit. See where you can go. You never know. Yeah, for real. I think some of us probably have similar uh ways of like getting about in the world like especially the treasure hunters that are in here like the people who came from um that community there's like some commonality between treasure hunters we obsess over things we try to do things that are arguably impossible um you know it's just the way we, it's just the way we are it's, it's probably like we probably have a lot more in common than not in common like i try to remind people like you know if we're all in this together, kind of like we we all are basically in the same boat, especially on that in, in that community. We we're all like <laughs> we're all like subject to somebody else telling us what the answers were that we weren't pursuing, and and so. I bet you can't draw okay, Larry, in fuzzy handcuffs. I bet you I can. <laughs> I draw myself in a prisoner suit. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, you know, like these are challenges. I could probably do these things. And the question is, why, why, why would you put me through that? Why do you want me to draw such weird things, people? Oh, you a commission? Don't make me drive up the door. <laughs> That's funny. I like that you guys get along with each other too. Like, they're, I mean, I, I don't want to jinx it, but uh, there haven't really been any. Like, I have the ability to like block somebody or whatever. It might be a second before I can put my brush down and get to it or something, uh, but I haven't had to. So that's, that's really cool. I appreciate you guys for being uh, decent to each other. I think, uh, I think it's cool that most of you guys, well, I think all of you guys get along. Like that. I think you guys like each other and stuff like that. So that's cool. Um, but like I was saying, you know, these are, these are things that, are nice but it's not like uh i should feel like i'm I, i'm entitled to such a nice community hanging out with me it, uh there's no reason for me to expect that or uh anything like that so anything i can do to kind of show my appreciation for you guys just let me know you need you need um you need some picture uh, drawn for some uh, charity event or something that you're doing for your church or, you know, like, I don't know what people do charity for. Uh, well, like a Copper Dan, uh, Copper Dan uh, 
you know, sometimes collects pieces for, uh, for, uh, St. Jude's. I think it's St. Jude's. Um, th that kind of stuff. I like, I, I would love to do that kind of stuff. Like, uh, something that ultimately goes to charity or something like that. Or, um, again, one of my goals is to eventually, um, when I feel comfortable in, in taking like on a lot of work, uh, I would like to do just like pet portraits for free for people who lost their pets. That's, that's actually one of my actual goals that I'd like to get to. I don't know how that would look like probably would need a website set up and I'm just lazy, but that's, uh, that'd be kind of cool. I like charities. I like giving back. That would be neat. Thanks, Ida. Um, I think it's got a ways to go before it gets to the point where uh, all those values are in there. Like right now, it kind of looks a little flat, but that's just a process, you know. You keep going over something uh, enough times, and you start getting some darker values. I haven't even put in any of the cool little... Um, effects that I plan to put in, like, you know, like the splotches and stuff like that. This is still pretty much a straightforward piece so far. Get some of this stuff pulling in. But each time that you go over something, you're further refining it. Um, some of the, may, I don't know, more noticeable details, those all come in at the end anyway. This is all still technically like a base painting. Get some of that ridges going on. This guy's, uh... Again, to me, no disrespect to bucks or deer or whatever you want to call them. Or stags. Um, they kind of look like cows. <laughs> <laughs> like, I could take the antlers off and you'd be like, oh, that's a nice cow you're drawing uh, or painting, Jeremy. They, they kind of look like, oh, no, you dreamt your dog died last night. I'm sorry. Uh, well, you, that's a terrible dream. Um, sorry. Sorry you went through that. And that's, a, that's definitely my nightmare. Um, my... Well, Bear, I think, is still pretty young, but Guinness is getting up there in years, and I don't know. Um, my parents' dog passed away, like, last year and stuff, so it's, like, fresh on my mind how, how fleeting these experiences with uh, pets are. Never take anything for granted. You never know. Enjoy the time that you've got, because you have no idea how much time you've actually got. So treat every day as if uh, it's the last one. Because you don't know. I mean, that's just good advice. Advice for your pets, for people, and your boss at work. <laughs> like you hate your boss at work. Well, you know, like it is if it's your last day, because it might be. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be making a joke while you're uh, you're talking about something serious, but. Yeah, I think this is starting to come uh, come along, um, which is good. Uh, I think at some point soon I'm going to want to get in some darker values. I want to work on, like, how to hold my brush, too. I like the artists who just, like, go like this and stuff. I, I, I haven't gotten to that point yet. I'm still kind of treating it like a pencil. Um, which is fine because I've seen other artists do that. It's just, I, I want to be a cool artist, you know, I, I want the whole art experience. I want to be like Picasso, just like, you know, just doing right. Or Jackson Pollock, just throwing paint at the uh, canvas. I want to be like all my heroes, you know. Um, this is why, like, the initial stage doesn't really matter so much. You can feel free to make mistakes. So just talking about the process again, like, if I had cared so much about like what actually goes into this like underpainting here, that that's almost got like a crippling effect when the truth is that, you know, I come in here, there's like this darker line that kind of comes up over like back behind the ridge of the uh, eye socket and then kind of forms across here and then kind of goes up. So once I put in this detail, 
who cares what that under picture actually looked like? There, it's all hints and reference points for you uh, to aid you in your process. Um, it's not anything you should seriously consider. Part of the appeal of this art style, I think, uh, just watercolor in general, but definitely in like the kind of pictures I create. Um, it's not perfect. Uh, it, it's more uh, suggestive, suggestive, whatever that word is. <laughs> Uh, really one of my dogs is 14.5 years. Mm. That's a seasoned dog. Oh, Yorkie mix. Thanks, Richard. I really do need to know, learn all the uh, different uh, breeds of dogs and cats, I guess, as well. And I barely know horses. I certainly don't know about deer. Are there different like breeds of deer? I guess there would be, wouldn't there? Yeah, there would be. Because there you have like I don't want to say anything. So one of my fears on this channel is that I'll say something that makes me sound so completely stupid. Like I was about to say, of course there are different breeds of deer. There's the antelopes, aren't they? But for all I know, antelopes are completely different species. I don't know. I didn't pay attention in school when they were talking about like the different species of deer. So I do worry about things like that because like, you know, the, the, some of the people who like this kind of art, you know, they just like animals in general and they're going to think, wow, that Jeremy is a moron. He doesn't know anything about animals. Yeah, dreams are weird. I definitely don't subscribe to the idea that like every dream, I mean, I don't know about like just in general, but certainly every dream, you know, it's not like a prophecy of something that's going to come true. Uh, sometimes nightmares are just concerns you have or something like that. Subconscious concerns or, um, you know, I, I don't know what they're based on, but it's, it's certainly nothing that um, it, you need to worry about in waking life. That's my take on it. Definitely, dream, like, not all dreams come true because I've had some good dreams that didn't come true. <laughs> I mean, I've had some, like, weird dreams. Like, I've been shot in my dream. I've died many times in my dreams. So that whole, um, you know, like, myth, you see it in the movies all the time that, like, if you die in your dream, you die in real life. That's, that's total crap. Um, just, just because, like, something happens in a dream doesn't mean it's going to happen in real life. I think it's supposed to be that way, you know? Like, dreams are supposed to be, like, I don't know. They, they, they certainly in the creative process. Like, I've had dreams where I, I have, like, a cool idea, and then maybe I try to translate that into, like, some creative work. But they're always weird. So the the weird thing about dreams, I think, the weirdest thing about it, there's a lot of weird things about dreams. Um, the weirdest thing about dreams, uh, I think, is like how strange it is that we all have them, but then none of us can relate to each other's dreams. So like if I sat here and told you like piece by piece what happened in my dream, um, you'd be like, oh, okay. But you would have no way to relate to it because that's not your experience and, and vice versa. It's like dreams are personal. It's so weird. And the, the other uh, weird thing about dreams is I've sometimes run into people who say, well, I don't dream. I don't, I don't ever have a dream. Um, I think the truth of that is that they just don't remember their dreams uh, because like, I, I think that everybody does actually dream. Uh, I think it's like just a part of biology. I mean, there might be like one guy out there in the world that doesn't dream, but it, that certainly not as many people that say they don't. And I, I think the uh, key to remembering your dreams is to actually like, you have to like, set them to memory as soon as you wake up right so like if you wake up in the morning and you roll out of bed and you go and you cook yourself some waffles or whatever um you're probably going to forget your dream because your mind is on other things but if you, uh, there's people uh i've done this before actually like not just people but myself uh, i've kept dream journals and um i was surprised at how many dreams i actually were able to recall by 
just the first thing I did was when I woke up, I jotted it down. I, I made notes and stuff like that. And that kind of locked in the memory so that I didn't forget it as I went about, like, you know, daily life. And so there's a pro tip. <laughs> art, art tips and dreaming tips. If you want to remember your dreams, make sure you write them down before um, you do anything else. And just the simple act of, like, rolling out of bed, that can cause you to forget them. Um, like, um, write, write, write them down as soon as, uh, like, um, some people actually even keep like pens with lights on them so that they can write them down. Like if they have a dream in the middle of the night or something like that. So just a little pro tip from your old buddy, Jeremy about dreaming. frustrating when you can tell you're dreaming but can't uh, control it especially when it's a nightmare um i think you can work on that because uh what you're describing is something called lucid dreaming and um one of the cool things about lucid dreaming is that you are conscious that you're dreaming while you're dreaming and you do have control over it um or at least like you can develop control over it to where um you can just do whatever you want you know um i'm probably butchering the explanation of it but there's I, that's definitely something that i was into a lot when i was younger uh lucid dreaming and um you know people actually like prescribe it for like therapy and stuff like that to kind of like help with nightmares so there's some probably something you can work on like i don't i don't have any tips for that like i don't have any like good advice on how to lucid dream or whatever but um, there's stories of people who developed a new skill while lucid dreaming because, you know, the mind doesn't really know the difference between what is real and what's perceived to be real. Like, that's how horror movies work. You know, you get a jump scare, your body reacts whether it's like a true thing or not, you know. Um, so I always find that fascinating. People who can, you know, like use their dreams to like learn like a new skill or something like that. That'd be like me learning to paint while dreaming, not actually like painting in like a real picture or something like that. I'd be curious. I'd be curious, like what kind of skills actually carry over. But there were people who learned to like play instruments um, while dreaming, which I find fascinating. I don't know. Make sure you fact check all this stuff, like look it up and see if I didn't just misread that somewhere. <laughs> Tell you what, like, more than waking up from my dreams, my problem is I'd like to be able to sleep on demand. Just, like, close my eyes and just fall asleep. That's a skill I want to learn. Where it doesn't matter, like, what kind of day I've had or anything like that. I just want to be able to shut off my mind and go to sleep. If anybody's got tips on that, I'm in the market. Yeah, that kind of stuff fascinates me. So, like, I'm sure most of you guys have already seen uh, Inception. I love that movie. Um, but that kind of stuff is actually, like, something that, you know, I mean, not, the, not like, the entire movie, but uh, learning to, like, kind of control your dreams with lucid dreaming, that's a real thing. Like, they, they prove that scientifically. And the way that they prove that scientifically is actually kind of interesting. So there are people who are... Um, oh, thank you. I appreciate that, Ida. Um there are people who are able to like recognize that they're dreaming and have some control over their dream, um, you know, better than others. And it's, it, apparently it's like a, um, a learned skill. So you can learn to do that better. Um, but, but it is called lucid dreaming. And there was this guy, uh, I want to say his name was Stephen LeBurge and he did some research on it and they were able to prove it scientifically. And the way they did that is, um, you know, the rapid eye movement actually corresponds to uh, things you're looking at in like a dream, right? So like he got the idea that uh, somebody who could lucid dream, meaning that they were conscious that they were dreaming while they were dreaming, could use eye signals to indicate the start and stop of, you know, their dream. And um, what he did is he had, uh, he had some um, subjects who could lucid dream basically on demand 
um, uh, report back what they were uh, dreaming and he would record their eye movements throughout the night. So one of them, their eyes were going like from the left to the right, to the left, to the right. And then the next day, you know, he asked him, well, what were you dreaming about? And, and, and the guy's like, well, I'm, I was watching a tennis match. And it's like, you know, that gave him the idea that like, wow, I, I, you know, we can actually do something with this. We can do experiments. We can like record, like, for example, through eye movements, um, you know, like the progression of a dream. So like, you know, a lot of people think that um, dreams, you know, sometimes occur over hours or something like that. I think what that is, is kind of like the cut effect in movies or something. Really dreams only uh, last maybe like, I think the longest a dream lasts, don't quote me on this, but I want to say it's minutes, not hours. Um, like most dreams are like short, like five minutes or less or something. And they actually occur pretty regularly. Like people have dreams on average every hour and a half uh, throughout the night, like several times throughout the night. Uh, it's just part of your sleep uh, schedule uh, or like sleep cycle. And the only reason you don't remember all those dreams is just because like it's easy to forget them. Uh, that doesn't mean they're not happening. It's just part of how biology works. But um, yeah, it, it's kind of interesting some of the different uh, things they've, they've done with uh, just dreams in general, lucid dreaming. It, it's fascinating to me. Like it, it's something that I spend a lot of time looking into. I'm not like... I'm not an expert on anything, so don't <laughs> definitely fact check everything I'm saying. But um, my understanding is that lucid dreams are real. It's something that can be measured scientifically. Uh, some people are better at it than others. Everybody dreams, um, whether you remember them or not. They occur several times throughout the night. It's part of your sleep schedule, and uh, and so I can tell you what my dogs dream about. My dogs dream about eating me I, i'm pretty sure because they like thrash around i let my dog sleep in my bed and they just thrash around and like want to kill me in the middle of the night they probably dream about like me feeding them cat food because that's that's all they care about in waking life <laughs> i can give them their dog food and they just don't care i give them cat food they just like lose it they're just so excited to have cat food yeah chasing a squirrel you know dog stuff and murdering their owners. Chasing squirrels and murdering their owners. <laughs> Something like uh, six years of your life dreaming? I believe it. I, um, that was actually listed as one of the other reasons um, why it's beneficial to like learn to lucid dream. If, if you think about it, you know, a full third of your life is spent uh, sleeping. So, like, if you can kind of recapture some of that by being conscious of, like, while you're sleeping, um, you can basically do more things, I guess. That's the argument, at least. So, like, if you're going to spend a third of your life asleep, get back some of those hours by learning a new skill or whatever. I don't know how it works. I just wanted to punch up this eye real quick. Make that look cool. Yeah. All right. So I think I am going to like add just because this is looking too perfect. I kind of want to, you know, get a little crazy with the, uh, I must say, get crazy with the cheese whiz. Uh, that's uh, like a Beck lyric. <laughs> like, you guys don't know. You're too young. Um, I'm getting crazy with the cheese whiz here. So the, the idea is that like, you know, it's, um, this deer is kind of dissolving into, um, oh, recurring dreams. That's why I, like the same dream all the time. Let's see if I can get like bigger splotches. Let me get this one here. I wonder, if, yeah, maybe there's a difference. This is where I say, like, I have no idea how these things are going to turn out because some of it is experimental. Yeah, so, like, depending on the brush size, you're going to get bigger splotches. That's cool. It's kind of, yeah, get crazy with it. <laughs> Take your frustrations out. 
I wonder if I can get, no, this is probably too big, but let's give it a shot. Let me just get like a, no, oh, part of my paintbrush is falling off. Hmm. Just want a big, there you go. Well, it's not exactly what I was looking for, but I think I want a big splotch up here. All right, so that's probably going to dry and not look so terrible. Oh, yeah, now, now we're talking. Look at that. All right. So hopefully that doesn't look as bad later. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll keep working on it. There's no accidents. Here. Well, there was accidents. There's no mistakes. There you go. So just let that dry, see how it goes. In fact, I am kind of curious. Let me see what happens if I apply some gravity to this. Let's kind of get that ball roll in there. Sorry, this probably looks weird to you guys. Just want this one little drop here. Ah, just want this one little drop to kind of move. So let me let me get rid of some of that. Come on, roll with me. There you go. All the way down the page. Let's do it. All right. That kind of worked. Anyway, you never know how these pictures are going to go. So you just kind of like let it uh, let it have fun. And, uh, you know, it kind of looks a little messy right now, but uh, some of these things are going to dry super light. And then uh, as I work it more, there's going to be uh, darker values um in some of these other areas so there's no mistakes it's supposed to look accidental like you're having fun uh with the paint splotches or like you know coffee spills or whatever it's just the way um this kind of painting goes and if it doesn't work out if it looks terrible in the end you know you you throw it in the garbage it's just coffee Um, a lot of the, um, a, a lot of the, uh, the magic here is actually taking your time and working on detailed areas and just letting the undetailed areas just kind of, just kind of do whatever they want to do, you know, like, I don't tell gravity what to do. Gravity does whatever gravity wants to do. So if the gravity wants to make that, that stop there, I'm not going to argue with it. By gravity, I mean, like, other stuff, like, I don't know, water tension, liquid tension. Um, what is, viscosity? Is that something? <laughs> like, I don't know what the right terms are. Something, something physics, I don't know. Thanks, Ida. Team Peter or Gail? You don't know what you guys are talking about. Team Peter or Gail? I don't know what that is, so I don't know. You can also kind of like, you can um, you can mop up some of these things. So like, if this is, I think this is a little distracting where it's at, so I can kind of mop that up. So this is going to dry super light because I kind of you know, if you get like a dry brush, it's not really an eraser. Now I could, I could use an eraser on this. It's just copy, but that was a bit intense. So now I kind of mop that up and it's going to, um, not be as distracting against this much darker, um, mouth area. I think, I think mouth is right. And, um, you know, that's just the way it goes. Little, little tips and tricks like that. So now this, this is less distracting and this bit I'm adding to the mouth is a little more defined. I still say, um, oh yeah, the antlers I think look really cool on this. I just like antlers anyway. And like I said, um, it's, it's tough for me to continue drawing this, uh, this buck here because um, what I really want to do is just kind of like erase all of this and put that on like a human head and draw this like really cool, like character, like, um, uh, what was her name? Hella from, um, 
um, uh, uh, Thor, yeah, uh, Thor um, Ragnarok, yeah, the the bad lady from that. I just kind of want to draw that instead, or paint that. But you know, I'm committed. It's going to be a stag. But the real tip is, you know, you just go over areas that you've already done uh, um, a bunch of times until you think it's it's got the right values. And because, you know, I keep saying it, but because uh, coffee really doesn't have like a ton of pigment in it, you're probably going to do that multiple times. I've seen people who treat it like straight up um, watercolor. And to me, that always comes out looking too faded. Like... It's not, um, it's not as dark as maybe you, you should have it. Um, it takes patience to uh, get the really dark values. It's basically the takeaway from what I'm saying. But the dark values, I think, are where the details are. So, like, you've got a big, messy picture. Um, the dark areas are really what kind of hammers home what you're looking at. <laughs> Oh, speaking of which, so um, I mentioned Friday that I was going to go to an art show over the weekend, and I did, and um, it was um, it, it it was like a, a like a figure nude um, art uh, show, and uh, it was it was actually really fascinating, like all the different kinds of art that they had there. Um, it, it's not what you think, you know, like there's there's a bunch of different ways to portray any subject matter. And some of this was in pastel, some of it was in paint. Um, like really, really kind of fascinating all the different kinds of uh, art that was there. Um, but uh, the reason I bring it up is you were, you were talking about um, a murderous cat in the room. There was somebody uh, who painted a picture and it drew my attention to it because it looked a lot like copy art. And I'm like, is that copy art over there on the wall? So I get up and, uh, and I read the, the description. It was painted in blood. Like some artists actually use their own blood to paint a picture. And I'm like, oh, that's disgusting. But also so fascinating. Like, because in my mind, I have to think about like, well, how does that work? Like, do they just kind of like, I don't know, go to a doctor's office and like have blood extracted so that they can use it as paint. I don't know. To me, it's disgusting, but also kind of interesting. I don't know. Maybe, maybe like, maybe I should mention that because like, it is kind of gross. Like, but that's what, that's what I saw over the weekend. It was, it was a very bizarre piece. And there were two of them. Sorry. There were, there were two paintings done in blood and I'm just like, ah, that's just so bizarre. So artists are weird people, by the way. I don't know if you guys knew that. Or some of us. But, yeah, that was probably the most bizarre. All, all the other work was, like, traditional type stuff. Like, you know, I was more fascinated in, um, <laughs> no fishies, but, um, I, like, I, I was kind of fascinated in the wide variety of different mediums that people had. Um, there were sculptures, there was uh, paints, paintings, um, just because like I enjoy using pastels myself, uh, it, it was kind of cool to see all the different pastel work. Um, especially like if you're drawing a person uh, or like a figure study or something like that, pastel is, is really a cool way to get like the different tonal values, like, you know, shadows in the face and, and body and things like that. So to me, that kind of stuff is interesting. I didn't see any charcoal work. No, wait, there was one or two pieces of charcoal but they were kind of underwhelming. There wasn't much to them. Like some of the paintings were more interesting and the style of paintings were, was kind of cool. So like, again, you know, it's a human body, right? So like, you know, you think human body, well, that that's, there's a, there's not very many way, ways to like translate that, that to art. But if you're thinking that you're wrong, <laughs> you know, I mean, just look at Picasso's work. Uh, you know, that's a cubist reduced uh, version of uh, like, human bodies walking around, things like that. So um, there was there was things like that in this, uh, this art show that I thought was kind of fascinating. Yeah, some of us are random. That, that's a good way to put it. Did I get coffee in my bourbon? 
but yeah so like it's disgusting somebody painting a picture in blood but you know i'm weird so my thought my thought isn't oh that's disgusting well yeah my thought was you know that's disgusting but my second thought was how how does that work you know so like for this coffee painting i dump a bunch of coffee on a uh on a plate and i add water and that's really all there is to it like how does how does somebody like ah i don't know i wouldn't buy that art like uh, i think it was like a three thousand dollar painting like it's it what all right what is more weird that that painting was created or that that, that painting is for sale <laughs> like that's, who wants to buy something like that that's just nuts I don't know. People are weird. But, yeah. So, maybe a vampire. A vampire might buy that painting. You know, I don't know where the blood came from. I, I wish I knew. Um, it, uh, it was kind of... Um, so, what drew my attention to it, again, is that it kind of looked like coffee painting to me. And... Uh, the reason why, in, in hindsight, is that it, it was like monochromatic. It it was kind of like a maroon color, um, maybe like a rust color or something like that. Um, so, you know, if you get past the idea that it's disgusting, uh, it was kind of an interesting, you know, piece from uh, just like, I don't know, like a stylistic point of view or, or something like that. But, yeah, it's gross. I don't even know. I shouldn't have brought it up, to be honest. <laughs> like, but um, there was that, uh, somebody mentioned metal earlier. Um, one of the cool things that I thought, well, that I thought was cool, is somebody had done an oil painting over like a big plate of aluminum. And I'm not sure how that works. I'm gonna have to look into that. Like how do you bind in, like an oil oil paint to um, to metal? That was, uh, was kind of curious to me. Um, just a real um, quick note on the, if you didn't see my coffee art uh, painting of the horse last week, I did talk a lot about how it kind of gets syrupy as it kind of dries on this plate. And that's actually kind of cool and where you want to be when you come to do like dark areas like what I'm working on now. You want it to be kind of like the syrupy mess um, just because it's easier to paint with and get that dark value. <laughs> vampire would eat that pain that's what i'm talking about once you get back once you get past the ew that's gross uh, aspect of it then your mind starts wandering like yeah a vampire would totally get into that painting it would be cool and yes a vampire would probably eat that painting that's uh that's the natural conclusion um to a vampire that would be like oh that's a birthday cake <laughs> i don't know But yeah, like you always say with the joke of people like painting with poop or whatever. Um, yeah, people paint with whatever. It's, um, but see, the, the, here, all right, so this is important. Uh, and, and, like, this is probably my last comment on it. But um, the thing about it is like, wh why? Why? It's not edgy. Uh, so you paint in blood. It's, it's like, okay, yeah, it, it starts a conversation. I mean, here we are talking about it now. But also, it's like, it's not cool, you know, it's gross. It, you know, you're not doing anything like, I don't know, I just don't see the point. It's not like you're you're making like a statement as an artist or anything like that. Uh, same with poop, you know, if you're painting poop, it's like, what, do you, what are you trying to say? It's like, so what, you painted with poop, ooh, congratulations. Uh, some 80 year old guy in like, a, like an old folks home probably does the same thing. <laughs> Probably like, yeah, yeah like a, a demented person probably paints with their poop. So congratulations. You you have the artistic equivalent of, see of, an, of, a, of a, some mental patient. It, so, yeah. All right. Ida, that's a good point. So it does start a conversation and, you know, people do talk about it. Like um, from that standpoint, I can I can see I can see the point, you know, but still it's like it's it, it's a conversation about how weird it is.
it's not even a con conversation about the subject matter. Like, I don't even remember what the subject matter was. Like, I don't, I don't know what that guy painted. I just remember that it was painted in, like, human fluids. It's gross. Coffee. Coffee is what you should be painting in. <laughs> Just go off and get some some regular paints. They're not that expensive. Or paint and coffee. Maybe ketchup. If you wanna if you want to paint something like that, just get a bottle of ketchup. Go to town. Have you know, just try all the condiments. Um you've got you've got mustard for your yellows, you've got ketchup. If you mix them together, you've got barbecue sauce. So paint with barbecue sauce. There's your nice little brown colors. Trying to think what might be blue. You could like, I don't know, use like fruit stuff, like fruit syrup. I don't know, like blueberry pancake syrup or like blues. I don't know. Kool-Aid. There you go. I um. So that's actually interesting. So I am kind of curious, like if you can paint with coffee um, and get a mo monochromatic picture out of it, could you paint with Kool-Aid? Because Kool-Aid's kind of similar, right? So like here it is, I've got powdered coffee and I'm just controlling the amount of water in it to get different values. Would that work with Kool-Aid? I don't know. Could you paint a red tone picture using Kool-Aid? Might be fun to experiment, see what happens. Uh, I would say that like coffee paintings are probably more archival quality. So yeah, this is basically ground up coffee beans, right? Um, versus Kool-Aid, which is 90% sugar or 99% sugar, and then maybe some dyes and stuff like that. That kind of stuff might not hold up over time. I do know that coffee does uh, because I, I've done coffee pictures in the past and, and so on. Um, really, the, the, um, the way to preserve this is to maybe give it like a UV coat and like some kind of um, clear acrylic sealant or something and then you know this will last forever so it does have that kind of archival quality to it thanks Ida your wife got a bathroom box that says girl stuff if you turn the box around it says shark week <laughs> that's great yeah I'm liking how this is turning out I do think I have a ways to go like um but, you know, that's the way it does. Just keep working it until you're happy with it. I think that this nose is, like, starting to look better. Just, like, the last 10 minutes or so. And um, I think that... Oops. Add a little more water. But, yeah, now that you've got, like, some lower... Um, lower base coats... I don't, I don't know if I should call it coats, but once you got that in there, the other stuff just kind of lay, lays on top. So you can, you know, with like the right amount of water, which is like very little, you just, you, you want to keep dabbing into the surfy areas, um, but you can get kind of like some of this darker stuff, darker values, which is great for details. It's, it's basically like um, uh, line work. If you're doing like a, uh, a uh, watercolor picture and then coming back over it with ink. I don't like this splotch here. I think that that's confusing. So I'm going to try to just kind of blot that out. Just kind of see if I can lift some of that up. Use kind of like a uh, cleaner brush. See if I can kind of like erase that or just smudge it out a little bit. I don't like that because it kind of looked a little bit confusing right next to the eyeball. See, see how you can correct a mistake? Um, that's all there is to it. You just add some water and you kind of use it as like an eraser. Now here, I'm just kind of like smudging it in. So that's like part of this underpainting, but I didn't want like a circle splotch there. So like as I'm randomly to adding splotches to the paper, I have no control over that. It goes in. Oh, thanks Willie Nelly. See, I love that compliment. Thank you. Um, because like, I never know. Um, uh, but I, I feel like I've improved. So I appreciate you recognizing that. Um, thank you. But um, yeah, so like you've got 
you've got like this little circle around here. It kind of conflicts with the eyeball. It's kind of confusing and stuff like that. If you just add some water and just kind of smudge it around, um, that goes away. So that's a, that's a pro tip for fixing your mistakes. I honestly believe, and I've mentioned this before, um, most of your job as an artist isn't, um, you, you, most of the, most of the skill in, in being an artist is fixing mistakes, to be honest. So like, it's not like you're not going to make mistakes. Everybody does. Um, there's probably a ton of mistakes in this that I can't fix or I'm not going to fix or whatever, but some of them are important to fix like that second eyeball. <laughs> it looks weird, right? So it's kind of, it, and it, it's not that it looks weird because it's art, you know, it can look whatever way you want it to, but, um, it, it, to me, it's distracting from the actual eye, which I think should be like a, an important focal piece. So I want to remove that. And, you know, that's just, that's just like, again, most of your job as an artist is just coming back and fixing little details. And I may not fix everything in one sitting, like some of these things as, after it dries. It, um, the other thing about watercolor and definitely coffee is that you never really know what it's going to look like dry until it dries. Uh, you can make guesses and, and hope that it's going to dry, right? But, you know, it's probably got a few more phases to go through before it's fully dry. And then you may want to correct and make corrections um, after it has. So that's what I do. Like, I won't call this done until tomorrow morning because, um, you know, I'll probably obsess about it all night. I'll probably have dreams about it, nightmares even. Uh, but then, like, in the morning, I'll take a second look at it. It's almost like if you're writing, like, a book or, or a story or something like Oh, bye, Ida. Sorry. I should be paying attention. Um, yeah, so, like, it, it's like if you're writing a story or something like that. Um, you know, you, you do a first draft, then you come back and, you know, you write a second draft. You fix all your typos. Or if you're like me, you basically have somebody else read it so they can fix all your mistakes. But it goes through different revisions. It's the same way with... Um, you know, don't get me wrong. There are some paintings and, and pictures that I just kind of rush through, um, intent, and, you know, on purpose. Like I, I just want to see if I can put, and like brush through it and create something interesting. But if I care about a picture, which I, I care about this picture, I think it's looking kind of cool. Um, you want to give it two, three looks at it, fix some mistakes. Like this area here, I feel like Eventually, that's going to need like a darker line. I have to wait until it dries, and I may forget to do that. So tomorrow morning, I might remember to do it. That's that's all I'm saying. You guys get the idea. Hey, Davio. Yeah, it's a uh, coffee, coffee, Bucky. I like it, coffee, Bucky. Since I'm not into hunting or anything like that, I don't I don't know what to call these animals, but. I did mention earlier in the stream, like, I, I always thought that, like, if I ever had the desire to go hunting, I would probably go with, a, like, a camera. I would love to, like, stalk a deer. Like, dress up in camouflage, the whole the whole deal. Um, stalk a deer and then take a photo of it. That would be cool. Like, I don't know, be like a wildlife photographer and just, like, hunt down animals just to get their picture. That would be cool. Because I like the outdoors, you know. And I, you know, I, I've grown up around people who hunt and things like that. It's just not for me. Um, but if it was for me, I'd put my spin on it. I would be a, a wildlife photographer. I know nothing about photography, by the way. Yeah, Willie Nelly, I, I hear that. Get obsessive with it. And I do. I, I definitely do. Uh, up to a point. At, at some point, I'm just done with it, you know. So it's like, I obsess about it, and then I'm like, I don't care anything about this picture. But then I stress about it for, like, weeks after, um, even though I'm not actively doing anything on it. Like, maybe I even gave it away or something. I'm like, man, I wish I had that back so I could fix something. I have learned, and it's probably the alcohol. <laughs> so I drink, I drink, right? So I drink this alcohol, and everything looks good to me when I go to bed, right? And I think it's the alcohol. Um, but then the next morning I'm like, eh, it's not as good as I thought it was last night. And then I just want to like throw it away or fix it. Um, I'm going to start, I'm going to coin a new phrase, um, for evaluating art. 
I'm going to say, well, that looks whiskey good. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point too, Willie. Um, I could, I could stay up all night working on this stuff. Like I usually do about two hours during these live streams, but once I turn off the live stream, like you can actually see this when I make my shorts, like my time lapse pictures, you'll see towards the end, a big jump, right? So like, you'll see what you saw during the live stream. And then all of a sudden I'll show the finished work and it's like got all these extra details and stuff like that. That's either done the next morning or sometimes when I'm really obsessed with it, I stay up all night and just work on it. So like, even though I'm not going to do the live stream here. So it's uh, in the Eastern time zone of the United States, it's 930. Um, even though it's 930 here, um, I'm not going to be like streaming until three o'clock in the morning, but I might, you know, depending on how much I like it, I might actually work on this until three o'clock in the morning. I don't know. For these copy art pictures, they don't usually take a ton of time, but this one's a little big and there's like a lot of detail to it. So I could see myself going back and forth over a bunch. There's just like little shadows. So like just in this ear, there's like a lot of little shadows. Little, little features to like put in. And I can simplify it and skip some of them, but I also think, nah. Let's make it look like an ear. Let's get really creative. Uh, like, let's put the time in, is basically what I'm saying. Well, yeah, kid, that is uh, something that people do. You know? Uh, it's not supposed to be work. Like, so even for, like, professional artists, like, you're supposed to be chill about this, and you're you're supposed to, like, let yourself go and just be creative and so on. So, like, I don't know. Everybody's different, right? Uh, me, personally, I like to listen to music. I, I don't... I like talking to you guys when I'm doing the live streams. Um, that, that relaxes me. Um, but, like, when I'm just working on something and you guys aren't here, uh, I'm usually listening to, like, music and... You know, for me, everybody's different, but for me, I, I like to listen to, like, classical music or something like that, just to zone out or chill hop or, you know, some the kind of music you would listen to while studying. I don't want anything, like, I don't know, distracting me from what I'm working on. I, I want to listen to, like, a podcast, for example, or something like that. Do I have an Etsy now? I do, and but there's nothing really on it. Like, it's up there. I put up... um I put up a listing for those uh, black paper, white pencil, uh, pet portraits. Um, but I don't know. Like, I, I don't I don't really promote it, so I don't see it getting a lot of traffic or, or like, anybody actually caring. Uh, I, I put the price low, so, like, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of doing an experiment just to see if anybody organically shows up there. But there's not really much. Uh, this might go up there. I don't know. Depends on how it turns out. My, my, my thought is that I would put things up there later. I'm not, I don't really have that much up there right now. Appreciate you bringing that up, but there's not much to it yet. One day, baby steps. Um, I really only started the Etsy thing because I think my dreams of uh, going to an art show this year have like kind of fizzled out. Uh, I, uh, naively towards the end of last year thought, well, you know, maybe I'll set a, a goal for 2024 that I'll create 30 pieces that all kind of look alike and I'll, uh, I'll go to an art show and try my luck. But then, then I realized what's involved in going to an art show, like, like the booths themselves, uh, you know, I don't know, like 600 bucks, you got to sell 600 bucks of art just to break even. And then you got to get a tent and. You got to get frames and all this crap that I'm just not interested in yet. So, all right, baby steps. I'll, I'll build up to that someday. Right now, I'm, I'm my primary focus is on um, creating art that I'm proud of. Um, but not just that. I, I uh, one of my major goals for this year, and this is why I'm doing like a second coffee art thing is I really like the uh, last coffee art thing. So one of my goals this year is to kind of create like several pieces that are kind of like similar in style and just see if I like doing that. Um, 
and unfortunately, like the only things that are kind of similar in style right now are those uh, black and white pictures with the. Uh, um, so that's why I put on Etsy, but I, I'm not really excited about that that work at this point. I think it looks nice. Don't get me wrong. It's it's just I want to kind of I want to kind of expand into other things. Like I want to I want to paint. I'm enjoying painting. I think that um, drawing should be my. Uh, my dessert, not my bread and butter. Yeah, Willie, yeah, for real. Uh, you know who you should talk to? Um, Copper Dan. Uh, the whole reason why I thought about it is I actually met Copper Dan. Uh, he was in Louisville for um, the St. James Art Fair. And uh, he was showing off his uh, copper pieces. And I was just hanging out with him at his booth um, for a day. And it was a lot of fun, uh, you know, like... You know, people have opinions over Copper Dan and stuff, but if you meet him in real life, he, he's actually a really cool guy. Um, he sucks as hell. <laughs> don't get me wrong. Like, I don't know if you should trust him. <laughs> like, Copper Dan, if you're watching right now, you know, you know that you're not trustworthy. Uh, you know you're sucks as hell. Um, but uh, if you just hang out with him, uh, you know, he's actually a pretty cool guy. I, I like hanging out with uh, Copper Dan. But anyway, we, we got to talking about, like, uh, you know, what's involved in, like, doing a booth and stuff like that. And and um, he told me what he paid for the weekend, and I thought that was kind of cool and everything, but, like, you know, all the all the infrastructure, I think, is uh, something you have to build up to. It's not just something that you can just hop into. And let, I mean, unless you got plenty of money and you just want to, like, invest in it or something, like, you just plop it all on a credit card and go with it. But but you also need, like, yeah, Copper Dan is totally sus. Um, but you also need, like, I don't know, I read somewhere that you need like 30 pieces that are kind of consistent and uh oh you had a t-shirt company at one point and the setup it shows yeah it was very expensive that's my understanding um i think that what really gave me the sticker shock wasn't even the art shows um i looked into like what it costs for a booth at a comic-con uh and it's not like we have the biggest comic-con around here it's a it's kind of like a regional thing um it's kind of, it, it's all right um, but it's not even one of the big ones that you see in like in New York or California or something like that. But anyway, um, my thought was that I would spend these winter months coming up with something that might appeal to comic book fans, like kind of, kind of something in the geeky genre or something like that. I don't know things that I'm into. Um, but then that's $900 for like a 10 foot by 10 foot booth. Like it's not even a large booth or something. It's like $900. It costs more than the art fair. It's ridiculous. So, killed that dream. At least there you wouldn't need a tent, though. Like, you just set up a table or something. I think they even provide the tables, but you basically have to, like, sell $900 worth of art just to break even, and, <laughs> like, <laughs> that's just too much pressure. I can't do it. Can't do it. Like, I think I would enjoy being at a Comic-Con um, if I wasn't pressured by like, crap, I need to make $900 this weekend or else I, I've wasted my money. Just like having a booth. That sounds awesome. Like, even if I didn't sell anything, but you know, if I, if in the back of my mind was, I have to sell $900 worth of art, I'm not going to enjoy that. Especially that I don't have the art anyway. So like, I'd have to go off and create the art, which I feel like I could probably do. Like if I, I had a, like a three month goal of creating 30 pieces. I could probably pull that off. Like that, that's the kind of mentality I've got. I, like I would set that as a goal. I would like just live and breathe it until it's done. But if the payoff is to stress on selling all that stuff, like you sell $900 art, worth of art, you should be proud of yourself. But if you sell $900 worth of art and you just broke even, it's like, it's cheaper just to stay home. I think you can share a booth with somebody. That would be cool. Uh, and I do have a friend who paints, and she's pretty good at it, and she's done the booths in the past, so, like, I might reach out to her to partner up. That's a, that's actually a cool idea. I didn't really think about that, but that might actually work. Yeah, kind of pair up or something. But you know what I would do? So, like, if I had a booth, Right. What, what kind of art would I bring to it? Like, about how much do you charge for your paintings? I mean, I don't know. Like, right now, I'm not even actually charging, like, um, uh, 
some people have been kind enough to give me donations for uh for stuff i've done but it, it's always like whatever they they want like i don't i don't know how to price this stuff i'm i'm still practicing i'm still learning i don't have the mental bandwidth to set a price um i suck i know like these are things that i need to learn uh if i ever want to like actually sell them but that's not really my goal my goal is to um my goal is to give somebody something that they would want to buy so that means that i need to practice my skills before i ever um before i ever try to try to like sell something but you know that said people have given me money to uh for like art that i've done and stuff but i always leave it up to them you know what it was about what did, what do they want to pay and honestly like if i can get by with that being like the model <laughs> That would be awesome. Like, leave it up to them. That's kind of why I want to um sort of do that that thing where I'm um doing people's pet portraits like as a donation, like to them and stuff like that. I I I'd rather, you know, find some rich patron or something like that who just gives me money to just go off and paint pictures for other people or something. That would be awesome. These are, these are my naive thoughts. I, I know it doesn't really work that way, but like that, that's my fantasy at least. So I have no idea, to be honest with you, Marvel. Like, I don't know how to price pictures. You'd have to find uh, somebody who's been in this for a while. I'm still in the uh, I'm learning phase. Hey, uh, Hater. How's it going? Hey, Billy. How's it going, man? Oh, the moon's in here too. Neat. We got a party going now. Yeah, I, I don't, so like my bread and butter, my, my real job is like being a software developer. And even that, I don't, I don't, I don't like the uh, business side of it. I don't like, you know, sending somebody an invoice or anything, but it's, it's usually pretty straightforward. It's, it's pretty well pr prescribed. Like I charge X amount of dollars and they agree to it. I do the work. I keep track of my time and I send them a bill. You know, I don't have to put a lot of thought into it. They get the bill if, as long as. As long as they like the invoice that I charge them isn't like completely ridiculous, they pay the bill and then the money goes in the bank and everybody's happy. You know, they got what they wanted. They got what they agreed upon. Um, and it's all pretty straightforward when it comes to art. <laughs> it's all over the place. Right. So like, what, how do you, how do you actually, um, and, uh, you know, maybe some viewer or something like might want to dr drop a comment in the comment section or something if they have some advice on this. But how do you price art? So, like, to me, it's the time I spent on it, but I'm just sitting here chilling, hanging out with you guys anyway. So I would do this whether anybody ever bought this picture. Like, so it's not like it's not like you charge the amount uh, based on your effort like you do with software development. You know, software development, they're buying my time. They're buying my time and they're buying my expertise. Um, and and there's like industry standards. And as long as you don't deviate from the industry standards, you're all set, right? But like, if Picasso painted this, this would be worth a billion dollars. Not really, but you get the idea. But I painted it, so it's not definitely not worth a billion dollars. So like, how do you really price it? Is it by the square inch? And then, you know, like... Then it's just a matter of real estate. I, I, I don't get it. I really don't. I don't know how that works. Yeah, like, I don't know. But then I look at it as like, um, yeah, like, a, that's why he's got his art, <laughs> Marvel, good eye. Yeah, it's, it's, he's got coffee on him. That's why he's got the uh, arm over his face, like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> good observation poor guy <laughs> all right so like yeah okay okay larry oh, like okay okay larry um let's say that you charge by the square inch right so what do you charge like you say 17 dollars. that's what eric sloan used to charge but say so you charge a dollar per square inch well that's 12 dollars by 18 dollars there ain't no way this painting's worth a dollar per square inch. So what do you do get down into like uh give me a nickel per square inch or whatever i don't know I don't know. This is all stuff that's part of the journey thing, though. I think the stuff that I'm supposed to learn, but, you know, 
I kind of have this loose idea of my progression in my mind where that's all later days kind of stuff. Like I did set up that Etsy thing, but like I said, there's nothing really on it and stuff like that. And I only set up right basically to learn Etsy. Like I would like to put digital goods up there and see how that goes, but I'd have to research what's involved in that. It's all part of a learning process where I'm at like this kind of like stage two, like this is the second season. Yeah. So I started this channel January, 2023. So we're only on season two here, guys. This is just season two of the Jeremy made art show. Um, you know, that's like a season five thing. That's, that's future Jeremy's problems. Present day Jeremy problem is like, how do I, how do I get coffee out of my little stick dude? And you know, what's the right amount of coffee to put on this paper to make it look, um, like a, an actual stag. I'll come back to that later. And I also want to work on this here, but I'm, I'm looking at this, uh, I'm looking at like that's coming up on the two hour mark. And I, I think, uh, I need some more definition down here so that it doesn't look so flat. Anyway, that's current Jeremy's problem. Um, current Jeremy's problem is like, well, what do I like to paint? What do I like to draw? What kind of style do I like? What kind of mediums do I like? You know, I, I think, um, you know, like it's not my opinion. Other people come up with these ideas, uh, about how you actually sell art. And, um, they all think that, you know, and I agree with them. You have to be kind of consistent in, uh, in what you do, right? Set some expectations. So like, I'm all over the place in what I paint. Um, or draw uh, some of it's in colored pencil some of it's in watercolor some of it's in coffee different subject matters i mean i kind of steer towards wildlife sometimes portraits um but i'm not 100 percent sure what i want to uh want to work on so i think all that needs to be really worked out before i can be like a commercial artist essentially you know somebody who's actually doing it for a business or something like that right now it's just i'm a student I'm a student just like you guys, you know, I'm learning along with you guys. And to me, that's a lot more fun. Like you guys get to see me make mistakes and you get to see me on camera, try to cover up those mistakes before you notice. I think that that's a lot more fun. Yeah, like fixing my camera, apparently. Hold on. Yeah. So give me one second. I don't know why. There you go. Let's see if that come back on. All right, we're back. Cool. Yeah. So present Jeremy is trying to figure out how to work his freaking camera. So they doesn't go into, um, for some reason, the, uh, there's a, there's a, I use my uh, phone as the uh, camera, uh, the overhead camera. And um, yeah, Camo is the software that connects my phone to my computer. Oops, I think I messed it over here. Um, and uh, for some reason, whenever the camera go goes into uh, like standby mode, it shuts off. And um, in this case, like if I say the wrong words, it activates Google Assistant. <laughs> Make sure I don't do it again. And um, it's happened in the past and stuff. I keep forgetting to turn off Google Assistant whenever I'm doing these uh, live shows. It's an easy fix, but then, you know, you end up seeing that, you know, that stupid uh, camo logo for a minute. So, you know, one of these days I'll get some proper equipment and stuff like that. And then, you know, maybe I'll be a professional, but not today. Not today, I am a student. And I, I think I'm comfortable with that, you know? Like I said, you know, if you think of it in terms of a television show, I'm in season two, you know? We're still getting some of the main character flaws out. We're, uh, we're deciding, like, what some of the major themes are. It's just like a TV show.
Well, hey, hater, I appreciate that, man. That honestly, I I really do appreciate all the compliments you guys give me. Um, and I don't want you guys to get the wrong impression. Um, it's not like it's not like I um, I have low self esteem or anything like that. I'm just a realist, and I look at it more like. I, I'm not I'm not playing like a pity party where I'm like, uh, oh, woe is me, I suck at art or anything like that. I know that there's a certain quality here that uh, I couldn't per do back in the day. So I recognize that there's been progress and, and, you know, that's not lost on me. I just know that like where I want to be is still further down the road. So it, it's more like just being a realist about it. It's not it's not like... Um, it's not like I disagree with you guys. I, I just look at it as like more like, well, I'll get there someday. But I do appreciate the compliments. Thank you guys. Um, yeah, all, all of that is good stuff. I appreciate it. Um, your guys' support and enthusiasm for the work I do, that kind of stuff keeps me going. So none of that is lost on me i i know that without you guys i probably would, i probably would have given up on this a while a while back or just done it like privately or something you know i i wouldn't be doing a youtube show if you guys weren't into it i mean i'm a i'm into like doing creative work so i would probably continue doing this even without the youtube show but because you guys are into it it's, it's definitely motivational to keep going. Chester Retriever. Is this your first time in here? Uh, I'm not sure I've seen you before. Welcome aboard. Just uh, paint with coffee. Having some fun with some coffee over here. Trying not to drink it all in one place. <laughs> all right. I do think I need some darker areas in that ear over here and then we're probably like this picture isn't done i'm going to continue working on it overnight um but we're coming up at like the two hour mark so i'm probably going to call it done for now like let it dry and kind of like evaluate like how i can maybe add some stuff to it to make it like uh more done but like at some point, I so one of the features I think I'm going to put in every one of my coffee paintings, and it's kind of lame, it's kind of cheesy and cliche and stuff, but I want that coffee ring. So like I have this, um, I have this styrofoam cup here with some coffee in it. At some point, I'm going to put a coffee ring in it, just because like I feel like if you're if you're doing a uh, coffee art, you kind of have to have the coffee cup represented. Oh, w one other thing. So like, um, ah. Man, I forget some of these things sometimes. So that horse picture I did the other day. So I don't know if I mentioned this when I was working on it, but it was for a friend of mine because she got a new office at her job. Uh, like she was so proud of it. She asked me if I could uh, do a picture for her. And, I, and of course I said yes. Um, and I didn't notice this while I was working on it. So she works at a horse organization. In fact, I used to work there myself. And um, it's the organization that actually sends um, American athletes to the Olympics for, like, equestrian sports. Um, I'm not going to name it just because, like, they, you can look it up. But it, they, uh, they send, uh, they, they deal with the, uh, the equestrian side of uh, Olympic sports. And she wanted this for her office there at the headquarters. And I didn't realize it, but I was like, um, after I put it, those little coffee rings in there, I was like... Uh, Oh, uh, Larry's leaving. Uh, have a good one. Um, yeah, have a good one, Larry. Sorry. Um, yeah, I'm probably going to close this out pretty soon anyway, so you're not missing much. Uh, feel free to, like, check the time lapse tomorrow or something like that. But anyway, so, like, I was working on this um, this coffee horse that's going inside of this uh, office that deals with, like, Olympic sports and stuff. So I had put these little coffee rings in it, and I'm like, man, you know what? I should have arranged those like the Olympic rings. I'm like, man, that would have been so much cooler. But then I didn't realize that there's five Olympic rings and I counted them. And if you go back and you look at that, that coffee horse picture and you like look at it closely, I accidentally put like five little rings in it. So even though it was completely by accident, it is an Olympic 
coffee horse, which I think is awesome because like little unintentional things like that go like a long way. Um, because if I had put thought into it, I would have put that in there anyway. But then, you know, to find that it happened accidentally, I, I think it's just a cool story. I'm probably not telling the story very well, but to me, it was fascinating. I thought it was cool. <laughs> it's a hate crime using coffee for drawing. <laughs> no, it would be a hate crime to use decaf coffee for coffee drawing because decaf is like doing anything with decaf is a hate crime. I don't know why that is even a thing. Like what, the, what stupid person invented that? It's like, maybe if you're like using decaf to get off of regular coffee, I can see maybe the benefit being there, but otherwise it's just, it's ridiculous. It's like non-alcoholic beer is like, what's the point? You know, like if you're going to drink beer, you drink it with for the alcohol. Like if you, I mean, maybe you just like the flavor of beer, but still, it, I don't, I don't get it. I really don't. It's not for me. I do like some of these details. Like when, when these details go in here, it really starts to come together. But these are all like things that you have to build over time. Um, one thing that I learned, I kind of already knew this, but like one of my biggest lessons over the last year is like, <laughs> you got to have some patience. So I'm starting to like learn some principles here. So I'm throwing out some principles. I would say 90% of art is fixing mistakes that you made. Um, like 10% of your art, I'm, I'm just making up numbers, but like 10% of your art is accidental and you just have to roll with it. It's probably a lot more than that. I'm, that's actually a low number. Um, uh, let's see, what are some of the other things? Oh, and it's definitely like 90%. So like these numbers aren't adding up. So it can't be 90% of everything, but yeah, 90% on everything. 90% of everything is um, patience. Yeah. Yeah, that's my cat. My cat. My cat wants to be in here. It, my cat gets upset if I shut the door and don't let the cat in here. And then the cat gets bored and wants to leave at some point and gets upset that I don't open the door. My cat is very needy. My cat is very needy, but also hands off. Like I can't get the cat to like sit in my lap. Like I've had cats in the past that like to curl up in my lap and stuff. And I want to get Archer to do that. But for some reason, he just can't be bothered. He'll come up. And he'll like nudge my hand and like want to be petted and stuff like that. But I'm like, you know, I'll pat my lap and say, come up and sit on my lap. And he's like, no. Right? Like he, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, that, that's Archer. Hey, Archer, you want to say hi to the camera? Meow. Yeah, meow, meow. <laughs> I would show off Archer, but he's not going to let me like, put him on my lap. So it's a non-starter. Well, guys, I think that this might be done enough to where I don't feel embarrassed stopping the stream now. Um, obviously, there's like a lot more work to do. I got to work on this uh, this neck quite a bit. I've got to develop some darker values, maybe in in the face in certain areas and stuff like that. But that's going to take like a like a I don't know closer look and stuff like that. I actually think it's been a good conversation tonight. I, I've had a lot of fun. Except that bit where I was telling you guys about the art, the, uh, the art exhibit I went to over the weekend where they had the blood painting. That was I'll probably keep that to myself next time. Because that is weird. That vampire exhibition. My cat seems to be my biggest critic, too. Every time I say something that I think is funny, the cat's like, meh. Ain't that right, Archer? You're my biggest critic. You think all my art sucks, right? Let me see if it'll let me pick, pick it up. Come here, Archer. Come you want to let me pick you up? Nah, it's a bit of a touch or not. I don't know. Sorry, guys. You almost got to meet... Um, Little Nas exhibit. No, this was at um, 
So I live in uh, <clears throat> central Kentucky. This was at the, uh, in Lexington at a place called the Loudon House, which is actually a really cool um, gallery if you guys wanted to look that up. Um, it's, it's an old house that was converted into a uh, gallery, um, but it kind of looks like a castle. I mean, not like a really cool castle, like kind of a lame castle, but still it looks like a castle. And um, I love it. Like they, I, I go there every time they have a new exhibit. This one again was like, um, like a figure nude uh, exhibit. And uh, I wanted to just go there to see what kind of style of art people were doing kind of like in that genre or, or style or whatever, not style. Uh, yeah, genre, I think is right. I don't know. I don't know how to use words, um, but yeah. So like I went there for that and everything, but I, I would have gone there anyway, just because it, it's such a cool gallery. And um, sometimes they have like weddings there and stuff. It's just a cool venue, uh, but it's, it's kind of shaped like a castle. And um, it was pretty neat. Like they have several rooms where they uh, put up pieces. Like if I ever have a chance to like actually put my stuff in the gallery, that would be like top of my list of picks. I would love to show at that gallery. So if you're watching Loudon House, <laughs> make sure uh, make sure you put me on your list. That'd be cool. But they they have open calls for like submissions and stuff like that. Yeah, it's a lame castle. Well, it, it's kind of like it doesn't have like cool. I mean, it's got like the turrets and stuff. It's got all that um, like archer kind of um, parapets. I think it's the term. I don't really know. Um, but it, it is also, it used to be a house, like, I want to say back in the 1800s or early 1900s or something like that. But it's kind of cool. I got to go up in one of the turrets one time. It's kind of a pretty cool view. It's in, um, an area of Lexington. This doesn't mean anything to you guys because you're not from here, but it's in, uh, it's in kind of a cool, like, hip area of town where there's, like, a lot of, um, like, murals and art and you know, cool, cool little things like that. It's where all the cool kids hang out. Yeah. Yeah, Kentucky does have them. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm doing some work. I should paint like a bunch of horses in blue just to uh, take care and take advantage of the big blue thing. Um, I always make the joke that uh, Kentucky is the state that bleeds blue and votes red. <laughs> like every election, we're always like red. Um, but then like with the Wildcats and, you know, various sports and stuff, like the saying is like, you know, Kentucky bleeds blue. So that's my joke. I don't know if that's a sports joke or a political joke, but it's a joke. Or it's my attempt at a joke. The state that bleeds blue and votes red. Yeah, so I think I, yeah, I, I am getting pretty close to just, like, probably calling this for the night. Oh, you mean, like, music, bluegrass music, not the actual grass. Uh, sorry, I, I had to rethink about that. Yeah, the bluegrass around here is awesome. This cat's out of the cow. The cat's like, get off the freaking YouTube. The, the music is awesome. Um, and uh, we have those festivals and things like that. So like how New Orleans might have um, jazz festivals, we have bluegrass festivals. And uh, they're quite frequently. And, um, you know, some of the bars and stuff, they have like local musicians that do bluegrass. It's great. I love bluegrass myself. I, I don't know any of the bands. Uh, I wouldn't be able to like, you know, be able to tell you like one person from another or anything i'm terrible with names anyway uh but i do love and appreciate bluegrass it's such a cool sound um i loved um just as like a pop culture reference i loved their brother where are out though that whole sound um the soggy bottom boys and um ah, what's her name you probably know but i i, I don't remember i want to say allison something in the room but anyway, yeah, they um they had like music festivals and stuff here for that. And 
everything was kind of cool. And then, you know, just in terms of music, um, I used to live in Maysville, Kentucky, which is where uh, Rosemary Clooney is from. Um, and uh, I got to see her once or twice. And when she passed away, they um, they actually had a service for her at like a, a local Catholic church. And it was kind of cool. Um, Al Pacino showed up, uh, Beverly D'Angelo. Um, uh, George Clooney was one of her pallbearers. I got to see all of that, which was awesome. And uh, I, I always liked Rosemary Clooney. Like, I know that she kind of had, like, a rough life at points. But her music was awesome. And, you know, like, White Christmas is the reason I'm thinking of it, because it was just recently that I rewatched that. But, but yeah, bluegrass music, man. I love bluegrass. I, I like all kinds of different genres of music and stuff, but, like, just because I live in Kentucky. Yeah, Allison Cross. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I knew it was something like that. Um, Alison Cross. I love that, that kind of music. Basically anything from the Yo Brother Where Out Thou soundtrack. Basically it's just George Clooney in general. Like I, I have a, like a little bit of a man crush on, uh, George Clooney because I got to meet him. Um, he was at a music festival. Uh, they used to have, um, they used to have the Rosemary Clooney Festival in Maysville, and uh, he showed up a couple of times. And uh, oh, here's a funny story about that. So I got to meet George Clooney, um, and the way that worked out is uh, my office was between where he was sitting and the John. And he had drunk so much that night that he had to go and take care of business. But in order to go and take care of business, he had to pass right by my door. And I was sitting there waiting with the autograph pad and all that stuff. And I always like make the joke that uh, George Clooney and I are friends. Not really, but I make that joke uh, because when I gave him my piece of paper to sign, he asked me if I had a pen and I gave him a pen and he said to me, thanks, buddy. So George Clooney called me buddy, right? So we're obviously lifelong friends. Um, so that's my... Uh, that's my little story about that. Me and George Clooney are friends because he, he said, thanks, buddy. But uh, no, I just love George Clooney. I think he's a cool guy. And um, he's uh, he's from that area. And uh, he, he actually frequents the restaurant there called Caproni's. I know this doesn't mean anything to anybody here, but um, he's, he's pretty... He lives in Italy, but whenever he comes back... Because his, his father lives there, Nick and... Uh, well, his father and mother, I think she's still alive. Uh, but... He comes to visit them all the time and stuff. I've got to meet them several times. I actually held the door for his mom. Uh, they gave like a speech on Darfur, Dar Darfur or something like that, the local college. But I just I just like the entire family. Rosemary, George, uh, Nick Clooney. They're all cool people. Very, very grounded. Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. He called me buddy. We're We're obviously friends. I don't know. I don't go around calling people buddy. When I, I only call buddy. <laughs> Great. All right. So I think I'm going to wrap this up just because like my computer seems to be having a cow. The cat wants to go out. The dogs want to go out. Plus I think it looks good enough to where I think it's a good representation of where I'm heading with this. Um, so I, I think this is probably a good point to uh, stop. Well, yeah, yeah, obviously, Harrison Ford's my first man crush. I mean, you can't do you can't do better than uh, Harrison Ford. I grew up on Indiana Jones. I've had a man crush on Harrison. I, I wanted to be Indiana Jones. Who didn't? Um, and that's been the case since I was like nine years old. So, yeah, Harrison Ford's my first true look up to that guy and say, man, that that's an awesome individual. I, I wish I could be like that guy. Um but then, you know, George Clooney's kind of cool, too. That's right. I've seen that. <laughs> I love it. I'm, look, if you, if you don't look at this, it's a freaking cow. Like, only because it has antlers does it look like a, uh, like a buck. Otherwise, it's a freaking cow. That's my take on it. I don't know. I'm going to have to paint a cow next and just see how that looks. You know, a giraffe would be cool too. I've never painted a giraffe. All right, yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap. All right, Kitty, give me a minute. Uh, I'm gonna wrap this up. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. 
Um, I think this is a good start. Like I said, it's probably going to need some touch-ups. Um, like I do with all of my art that doesn't get finished in one night, which is most of them, uh, I end up uh, taking a picture of it and posting it on the community uh, tab. So I know that some of you guys, this might be your first time in here. If it is your first time in here, you know, give it a like, subscribe. I'm here usually on Tuesdays and Fridays um, doing these live streams. So I try to keep it entertaining. You don't have to watch every single one of them, but I appreciate it, you know, whenever people do tune in. But it's usually like this. It's usually just having a conversation while I do some artwork. I don't know. Some people like it. If you don't like it, sorry. Uh, it's the only thing I know how to do. Uh, so I'll probably keep doing it. But I do appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Uh, I know that I'm not entitled to it. So it's, it's definitely like um, something that I wanted to say thank you for. Um, but yeah, and this is my co-pilot. Let me, there you go. This is my co-pilot bear. You can see Archer in the background. She likes to uh, keep the time. Like, uh, anytime I go over two hours, she starts getting antsy and stuff, and she wants to go out. So that's probably what I'm going to do. But I appreciate you guys hanging out with me on a Tuesday. Hopefully you guys like the picture. Again, I'm going to finish it up either tonight or tomorrow sometime, and I'm going to post it up on the community tab. So keep an eye out for that. In the meantime, appreciate you guys hanging out with me. I'll see you guys later, uh, probably Friday. Um, so, so till then, uh, have a good one. Bye.